welcome to Univet's Inside the Octagon. I'm John Gooden with our resident expert, Dan the Outlaw Hardy. We'll be previewing UFC 186, where Britain's top fighting export, Michael Bisbing, takes on former NCAA All-American wrestler, C.B. Dolloway. Both fighters are desperate to get their UFC careers back on track after recent setbacks. The main event stars Demetrius Johnson, a man who seems to have the flyweight division all to himself. However, contesting that assertion is an immensely talented Japanese hopeful, Kyoji Horiguchi. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Ah! Introducing the champion, Demetrius Johnson. Horiguchi oh. is the new generation of Japanese mixed martial artists. Michael, the count fits me. CB Dalloway gets it done again. Oh, he's out. Oh, wow. This is going to get crazy. So UFC 186 pay-per-view card is live from Montreal, Quebec, Canada on Saturday, 25th of April. And Dan, that is a great looking main card. It is. Kicking off with uh, Thomas Almeida, the uh, unbeaten shoot box prospect. We've got Shane Campbell making his UFC debut and Steve Bosse. What more can I say about that guy? I was a fan of him as a hockey player. I'm really excited to see him in the UFC as, a, as an athlete. Well, we'll get to those guys in a bit, but let's make a focus on that main and co-main event. Co-main first, C.B. Dolloway versus Michael Bisbing. C.B. Dolloway, he is someone who's come from a wrestling background. He's changed his game for mixed martial arts. He was four and five recently on a bit of a hot streak, but then he quite literally ran into Lyoto Machida. Yeah, as some people do sometimes. Machida's <laughs> never an easy fight for anybody. No. But we've seen Dolloway look really good in a few of his recent fights against Francis Carmon. It looked very, very strong. An upset, really, uh, th this fight, because a lot of people were expecting Francis Carmon to win impressively and to establish himself as a top 10 fighter, whereas Dolloway just reigned on that parade, kept a lot of pressure on him, and just wore him down. This is that NCAA wrestling men mentality and he's also integrated that into his striking style as you can see here the aggression and the pressure he likes to put on his opponents he's brimming with confidence right now in his striking and he knows he's got the wrestling to back it up so he can throw caution to the wind and just drive forward and as you can see here against Tim Bosch who's a very strong wrestler himself yeah that drive alone here look at this beautiful lift takedown here nice very nice constant work rate constantly active and constantly trying to suffocate his opponent with pressure yeah so for this, as we always do, we've gone to Twitter, and thank you very much to everyone that posted their questions. And Dan, I have a couple for you. First up, from Adam Yates. Thanks, Adam. Uh, does Bisbing want this on the ground, or does he use footwork to wear him down, then land the bigger shots? That's a good question. For me, Bisping is a very, very talented kickboxer with great takedown defense. And although it obviously he's got a good ground game against Dolloway, I don't think he needs to try that area of his game. I think he needs to stick to what he knows. I think he needs to stay on his bike, stay moving, use his takedown defense to keep the fight in his arena and keep it a kickboxing match, basically. Nice. He's got good takedown defense. Tim Kennedy put him under a lot of pressure, and this was a really rough fight for him, but he did a lot of good things in it. He uses angles very well. He hits from different directions, and then he's constantly circling. So he's never standing in front of his opponent, something you're going to have to do with C.B. Dolloway, yeah. because Dolloway is going to want to do this to him. He's going to want to push him up against the fence, beat him up, dirty box him, and drag him to the floor. And if you hit the floor with Dolloway, that's a different world altogether, because then he can start taking your base away, making it very difficult for to get back to your feet. He's good in the center of the octagon with his takedown defense and if he can stay moving stay light on his feet it's going to be difficult for for Dolloway to pin him down with anything his work rate is also something that sets Bisping apart as you can see on the face of Kung Lee in this fight yeah. he wore him down over four rounds he's very very active he's got great conditioning and he puts combinations together so that's going to be his advantage against Dolloway yeah, and he was preparing, he's been preparing for five fives recently, so cutting it down to three yeah. may well be a little bit more explosive. But you alluded to it, and we, we just said it a moment ago, C.B. Dolloway is a former NCAA Division I wrestler. Yeah. And with the kind of game that he brings with the Power MMA team, Ryan Bader, Aaron Simpson, they, they've chained it well for mixed martial arts, been very successful as a team. They have, and you see it a lot from these NCAA guys. The way that they train, the way that they fight is very, very high pressure, very suffocating. And at no point does it does he give you a chance to breathe. At no point does he take a back backward step unless he's looking at driving forward again. Beautiful arm drag there, yeah. gets the single leg takedown. 
And this, from this point onwards, it's a constant onslaught. He never stops moving. A beautiful guard pass here on Coromon, and then he pins this leg to the canvas. A beautiful technique that a lot of people don't use. This is going to make it very difficult for Coromon to get his base back underneath him. Weighs heavy on him, makes him carry his weight, and this wrist control here nice. as well is beautiful. Because if for Coromon to get, get to his feet, he has to post on this. He has to create frames and create bases. And Dolloway takes that away from him. He's constantly stripping away his posts and smothering him and as you can see on the face of Carmon in, in the later rounds he was just exhausted he was frustrated he was he was he just didn't know what to do with Dolloway even on the takedown that he's practically defended Dolloway's tenacity just driving forward gets the finish he gets yeah. back on top and then here we are in mount landing some ground and pound it's it, it's the kind of fighting style where you don't get a second to think and with a guy like Michael Bisping he needs to keep creating that space if he's gonna land his strikes but Bisping's very much known for that output, that work rate. I mean, he's faced a who's who in the top 10 for many, many years yep. now. But yeah, he's got, he's got to keep that up so that he, he doesn't get his hips shut down and then dragged down to the mats. He does. And obviously, coming from the Tim Kennedy fight, he's going to know how that feels. He's gonna, that's going to be very, uh, you know, very recent memory for yeah, him. Yeah. He's going to invest a lot of time in his takedown defense in training camp. And if he doesn't, then he's not going to be able to throw these combinations that he throws. So here against Alan Belcher, he landed some really good significant shots. He's good at covering distance. He's good at setting up his opponent to land the shots that he wants. And he's great at getting his head out of the way so he doesn't take any shots yeah. for, for his troubles. Bisping just doesn't want to be in that mix with him. He wants to pick and move, stay on the outside until Dolloway starts to slow down a little bit and then that's when Bispy can really get to work. As we saw in the Kung Lee fight, Kung Lee starts to slow down, he started to get frustrated and Bisping slowly started to pour the pressure on. And Kung Lee's the kind of guy, again, just like Dolloway, you can't stand in front of him for different reasons. Dolloway's going to try and shoot and take you down, Kung Lee's going to throw some crazy spinning technique, yeah. potentially take your head off. Bisping did the right thing. He stayed on his toes, he kept moving, he didn't stand in front of, of Kung Lee. And to do that against Dolloway is the best game plan that he's got to win the fight. Stay on the feet and work his kickboxing. Let's take a look at some of the MMA maths, if you like, the fight metrics, and see what that tells us about both of these guys. And it really does tell the story of a striker versus grappler, and two very good ones in their respective uh, disciplines as well, Dan. Definitely. Well, if you look at CB Dollarways, it's all about the takedowns. That's his bread and butter. He has been improving dramatically in his striking, but there's no doubt that he's going to want to get Bisping to the floor. Obviously, Bisping, fantastic work rate, but also great defense, which is also something that we, we spoke about. He doesn't want to get hit by Dollarway because Dollarway will hurt him. He's got, he's got great punching power, and if he's on the back foot for a second, Dollarway is going to keep rushing forward and just keep him under pressure until, until he gets the finish. So he's got to be active. He's got to be busy. Okay, thanks, Dan. Well, that's the co-main covered. So, which fighter will come away with a membership to the top 10 club? This beautifully poised bout is extremely tough to predict, but who's your pick to win? And how do you see the fight finishing? As always, there are odds to be found on every round and it's all brought to you by Unibet. Watch and bet live with Unibet, the official betting partner of the UFC. On to the main event then, and Demetrius Johnson versus Kyoji Horiguchi. The champion then, DJ, the number three pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Crazy output, high energy, really technical as well, and making me talk very, very fast. <laughs> He's such a great fighter, Dan, and it, but it's a worthy adversary for this fight. He is. Horiguchi is a great test. Demetrius Johnson, we know what he's about now. Yeah. It, he's, looked, he's looked pretty much unfazed in the octagon so far. John Dodson had a good first round with him, but other than that, People, he's pretty much shut the whole division down. Horiguchi is a great test, and I'm excited for this fight. But let's have a quick look at what Demetrius Johnson does well. Watch him switching stances here. This is something he does beautifully. And it, it effectively doubles his options when it comes to striking. This is something that he does really well. Look at this. From an orthodox stance, stepping forward with a big overhand right, brings his leg with him, switches to a southpaw stance. Watch this back knee, and look at the position that Chris Carriasso is in to receive it. Receiving double trouble there. Exactly that. Yeah. It's a powerful asset to him because he can uh, he can effectively catch people with angles that, look at that, beautiful mm. little short left hook there. And again here, a right hook against Joe Benavidez that finished him. Oof. And as we were talking about before, the speed in which he moves, when he gets you in a position where he can hit you with a couple of shots, he's going to hit you with 10 or 15. And, and that's something that Horiguchi's got to be aware of because if he gets caught in a bad position on the floor, he's got to scramble quick. Okay, well, we've got another question for you, Dan, from Twittersphere. 
And this one is from Will Martin. So thank you, Will. Uh, where, if anywhere, can Horiguchi hurt Demetrius? Seems to me like there are not many holes in DJ's game. Seems to you, seems to all of us <laughs> that there are no holes in DJ's game. But Horiguchi is going to have to try and expose them. Yeah, well, I'm sure the crazy B team have got this all figured out. Horiguchi effectively can hurt him wherever the fight goes. He's a very, very powerful striker. He covers distance very well. And one thing that you, you'll see in uh, most of Demetrius Johnson's fights is he outspeeds people. He's too fast for them. That's not going to be the case against Horiguchi. He's, he's very fast, yeah. he hits hard, and he's confident. You know, 24 years old, unbeaten in his UFC career, and he packs a punch. He's got perfect timing on it. He's very good at intercepting people as they step in. And if they're being timid, he'll get after it. He'll chase them. Beautiful right hand straight down the pipe, and again, follows up with a kick, and then he's out the way <laughs> of his opponent's strike. And if he sees your hurt, if he sees an opportunity, he will pour on the pressure almost recklessly in, in, from a, an outsider's perspective, but this is very reminiscent of the Crazy B team and his hero, Kid Yamamoto, who is a, a, very relevant to this story, which I'll touch upon in a second. Watch this. Ooh. Oh, a beautiful Just right hand. Onto it. Slips to the outside of his opponent's jab, lands a clean right hand. That's the kind of speed that he's got. He can cover distance extremely fast. Just watch this body kick. <laughs> it's so quick. Bang. He's a dangerous guy, and Demetrius Johnson's really got to be careful with his movement because Horiguchi can cover that distance and can crowd him and hit him with big shots, which probably nobody else in the division can do or certainly has done yet. And he moves quite a lot like uh, John Dodson as well in his footwork, so that's going to be something that's, that's useful to him because he can draw upon the Dodson fight and, and see how he was effective and, and put that to play in this fight here. Without being cliched, it's, he's a bit like the flyweight version of of Leoto Machida with yeah. that karate base and the way that he can travel across the octagon is very special. So Demetrius Johnson, something that's really impressed me is, is the way that he can grapple, but, mm -hmm. but the way that the options that he opens up through his grappling and the yeah. way he chains it together, it's fantastic to watch. It, he does, it's a great point, chaining things together, this is something he does very well. Whenever he shoots in for a takedown, it's not, the, the end result is not getting the fight to the floor, immediately he works to pass against John Dodson. In this situation here, hanging on him, leaning on him, crowding him, this is the fight that he needs to take in there with Horiguchi. He needs to stay close to him. He doesn't want to give him that opportunity to start flying at him with all kinds of crazy left hooks and jumping knees and teeps yeah. because that's when it gets dangerous for the champion. Level changing Close underneath uh, Horiguchi's shots is going to be really useful. And in these scrambles where Horiguchi works for a trip, Demetrius Johnson's very good at maintaining that balance. And we know his submissions are good. This is a late finish over John Moraga. That was a fifth round finish, a beautiful arm bar. We saw in his last fight against Carriasso, again with the guard passing, as soon as he starts to pass the guard, he's looking to pin an arm, uh, as you, you're gonna see here. As soon as he passes, slides the knee through, and then pins the hand. And then immediately that Jack oh. Hammer po uh, pace of punch him. Pneumatic drill. <laughs> the pneumatic mighty mouse. And then the submission over Chris Carriasso was beautiful as well. He's got so many options when it hits the ground. He's gonna start pinning your arms and pouring on the pressure. And if you give him an arm, he's gonna take it. Yeah. Horiguchi's gotta be on his game if it hits the floor. He's gotta be trying to work back to his feet and create scrambles. Well, Horiguchi then, and his grappling, which is going to be called into question. I've, I've really liked the way that he goes about his work. Very good with the defensive side of, of yeah. grappling. He is. He's got some good trips. He's got some good takedown defence. And he's got great balance. And obviously, with his explosiveness, if he gets his hands on somebody, he can definitely take him for a ride. <laughs> Look at that directional right change. Uh, Lou Gardino is a great fighter, but <laughs> there were a lot of times he just seemed kind of clueless in this fight. He didn't really know what to do with Horiguchi. Beautiful trip, and very much like Mighty Mouse, progresses, pins the arm, and starts landing shots from the top position. And he can generate power from a short, uh, a short nice. distance as well. Huge lift there. And again, beautifully, beautifully timed and executed catches of the kicks. Watch this. Catches Lou Gaudino's kick, steps to the side. As Gaudino's in the air, he starts this movement to the side, straight onto Neon yeah, Belly. Nice. Really nice. He's drilled that before. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and the thing is, if you watch it, given the fact that, that it's so fast and it's so, it's so perfectly timed, it looks quite reckless. When in actuality, if you watch it in slow motion, you can see it's measured, he knows exactly what he's doing. We have to slow it in down to slow motion <laughs> down as well to take a look. Uh, talking of taking a look, let's take a look at the fight metrics and see what that offers us for this contest. And the champion, Demetrius Johnson, you know, has obviously the most wins and most fight time, takedowns and striking. But Horiguchi, you know, he's on a hell of a hot streak as well. He is. Well, he's 4-0 in, in the UFC, unbeaten, and he's had some really good performances. 
The, the defining factor for me in this though, and I love the stats, I think it's very interesting, but for me it's the mentality of Horiguchi going in. I spoke about Kid Yamamoto in, uh, before. He, he is listed on, uh, on Horiguchi's bio on the UFC website as uh, Horiguchi's hero. When he graduated school at 18, he signed up with the Crazy B fight team to train under Kid Yamamoto. And when uh, when Demetrius Johnson made his UFC debut, he fought Kid Yamamoto and Horiguchi yeah. was in his corner. Right. So he's lived this fight before. He was a sparring partner for that training camp and he was a witness at the side of the octagon as Demetrius Johnson beat his hero. So if that's not motivation to get in there and do your best, I don't know what is. That, for me, is the defining factor in his training camp. Horiguchi, the equaliser, perhaps. Great stuff. Thanks, then. So, will the king of the flyweight division, Demetrius Johnson, continue to dominate? Or will Kyoji Horiguchi, just 18 months into his extremely promising UFC career, usurp the champion? You can head over to unibet.com for a comprehensive package of pre-fight and live odds. Who's your pick to win? And how do you see the fight finishing? As always, there are odds to be found on every round, and it's all brought to you by Unibet. Watch and bet live with Unibet, the official betting partner of the UFC. So co-main and main done, Dan. There are other fights on the card, and we've got some very interesting footage for you. Steve Bosse, a guy that we've obviously heard that you're a, you're a fan of. We've got some... Some, some footage of him on the ice. Yeah, yeah. I was a fan of this guy as a hockey player. He was, he's just a monster. He's a very, very exciting, very Don Fry-esque style of fighting on the ice. <laughs> Collar tie and go he, for He's it. had over 220 fights on the ice. This guy who's just hit the deck, John Morasti, was one of his rivals. And he's stepping in against Fabio Maldonado, who is a fantastic boxer, got a great pedigree of boxing, over 45 fights uh, a, a amateur, 22-0 as a pro with 21 knockouts. And we've seen him compete in the UFC. We know he puts everything on the line when he fights. John McDessey, the bull, cracks like nobody else in the UFC. Very, very pressure, high pressure fighter. And he's taking on Shane Campbell, who's a debutant for the UFC, 11 and 0, but he, a Muay Thai world champion with a record of 62 and 9. That'll be a great Jeez. fight. Yves Jabwe, the tiger, another tri-star guy. Very dynamic, very well-rounded, and in a, in a camp that is producing some monsters right now. A lot of momentum for that team, and he'll be very well-prepared, taking on unbeaten shootbox prospect Thomas Almeida, 18-0. And he's only had one fight in the UFC, but it was a fight of the night, fight of the month, I believe. A fantastic fight, great performance, really talented. That's going to be a fantastic matchup. I'm really excited for this card. But yeah. Steve Bossy. Steve what can Bossy, I say? Yeah. Can't wait. From what you've said, looking forward to that too. So 186, there it is. And there's plenty more to look forward to as the UFC Roadshow ventures east in May. On the 10th in Adelaide, South Australia, heavyweight Stipe Miocic and Mark Hunt's headline. Then we have a debut for the Philippines as Frankie Edgar and Uriah Faber take centre stage. It's then back to the States for the eagerly awaited UFC 187. Two championship bouts and a stacked main card. John Jones and Anthony Johnson contest the light heavyweight title and Chris Weidman defends his middleweight belt against Vita Belfort. And you can get all the pre-fight odds with Unibet, the official betting partner of the UFC. So we'll be back to preview Frankie Edgar's bout with Uriah Faber in the Philippines. And don't forget, you can tweet us at Unibet using the hashtag Inside the Octagon with any questions regarding those for Dan and I to grapple with, which I'm not sure about. Enjoy 186. Thanks for your company and we'll see you soon.